The battle for the American League pennant looked like it was going to be an all-Texas affair. But, oh, Canada, nobody told the Jays. <laughs> you are locked on MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All fans and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am yours, Paul Francis Sullivan. And if I wasn't, how could I have a lower third where I claim that my name is Sully? I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now. And this is wrapping up my fifth full season here at the Locked On Podcast Network. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Please subscribe to us on YouTube as we're trying to get 1 billion followers. <laughs> and remember, there are fantastic shows all across the Locked On Podcast Network spectrum where it is your team every day. And in fact, some we go north of the border for, including today's guest as we are doing a crossover episode. Hey, it's Craig Ballard of Locked On Blue Jays. How you doing, buddy? Uh, was better about 24 hours ago as it just would have been coming off a win, coming off a loss today. It's yeah, it's September, right, Sully? So you're living and dying with every pitch. So yeah, uh, big picture wise, I guess I'm okay. But yes, uh, a, a little while ago I was better. Let's let, let's say that I guess. Yeah. Um, by the way, tell people where they can listen to your terrific show. Yeah, the, the locked on. It's locked on Jays on Twitter. I got caught by the locked on Blue Jays as one letter too many. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's locked on Jays on Twitter, but absolutely. We have the locked on Blue Jay podcast, the YouTube page. And of course it's available. If you're a podcast listener like myself, I'm an enthusiast for that. And it's available wherever you listen to your podcasts as well. Okay. Uh, before we get into our wild card discussion, uh, we got to take care of a little bit of business, which is the trivia question. The trivia question that we posted yesterday was the 1997 Marlins won the World Series over the Cleveland Indians. The Indians, and that's what they were called back yeah, then, true. <laughs> were as close to winning a World Series as you possibly can be. They had a lead with one out in the ninth inning in Game 7 of the World Series and runners on base in both the 10th and the 11th inning. And the World Series MVP was Levon Hernandez. It shouldn't have been. It should have been Moises Alou who had a better series. But what Cleveland legend who had 10 runs batted in in the seven-game series would have been the World Series MVP if they had held on. I had a bunch of people, including Kyle King, guess that it was Jim Tomei, but that's not the correct answer. Surprise! Amy Green once again gets it right. A couple of those people got it right as well. The answer was Sandy Alomar Jr., wow. who hit several home runs, had an OPS over 1,000, batted three-something, and drove in 10 runs in the seven games. But alas... The Cleveland Indians came up a run short to the fish. That would have changed the very nature of the franchise if they won the World Series and would have changed the psyche of Cleveland altogether. But Well, well Sully, before we move on from that, because there's a Blue Toronto Blue Jay tie there, three-time oh, sure. three time Toronto Blue Jay Tony Fernandez made that error late in that game to open up to, to tie that game, by the way. And and by the way, what, what really is heartbreaking is that uh, Fernandez was the hero of the ALCS, hit the home run that put them into the World yeah. Series, and got point. a big and got a big hit in Game yeah. Seven. Right. So if they had held on to the lead, Fernandez would be a the late Tony Fernandez would have been a beloved figure in Cleveland history, but alas, he has to settle for being a beloved figure in Toronto history. That he <laughs> he was one of the few members of that great 1985 team to eventually go on to win a championship because he was involved. He was traded away. I'm doing this from memory, but he was traded away from Toronto to San Diego in the deal that yes. Fred McGriff was sent packing and Joe Carter and Robbie Alomar came back. But midway through the night, he was not on the 92 team. That was Manny Lee was, or Manuel Lee. I'm sorry. He was yes. Manuel by then. <laughs> Again, I'm doing this from memory, doing yeah, my best. You're exactly but, correct. Uh, but midway through the 93 season, when Fernandez was on one of the most hated teams in the history of baseball, which were the 1993 Mets. He was traded for Darren Jackson, You're again, this. from memory. 
Uh, and Tony Fernandez was part of the team and played quite well, thank you very much, in the World Series and had several stints with the Blue Jays. In fact, he was an All Stars late in his career in 1999. Party so like, he had uh, party like he, Prince. He hit over three. He was hitting 230 for the Mets. Uh, he had over 300 for the Blue Jays the rest of the way. And Sully, to this day, has the major league record for most RBIs in a World Series. He had nine RBIs for the Blue Jays in that 93 World Series at shortstop. Is that good? Is that? Holy cow. Okay. Look, look what we're doing from memory here. Look yeah. what we're doing from memory <laughs> I love here. It. I love it. Well, look at a few weeks ago, the you know, about a couple of months ago, I called for the Blue Jays to make a change in the manager because oh. I was, frankly, I looked at the talent on this Blue Jay team. And I said, why are they not in the middle of this? Well, if, I can understand not winning the division, but why aren't they in the middle of this? The Blue Jays were dead in the water. They were, and to paraphrase uh, uh, Pops Fisher from The Natural, they were dead from the neck up. And they just didn't look like they were going to make much of an impact. And you saw the rise of when Seattle burst onto it and, you know, and put their flag into it. And then you saw the fact that both the Rangers and the Astros were playing anything you can do, I can do better. Mm -hmm. I can do anything better than you. I don't have the rights to that song. The Blue Jays looked like they were going to be really, um, if not sellers at the deadline, then complete non-factors. And yet here we are, we're past Labor Day, which you spell with a U, Yes, but we're past Labor Day, and as of this recording, the Blue Jays are one of the wild card teams. And if Houston can hold on to this lead against Texas, they will remain alone on the third wild card spot. Um, before you and I get dive too deep into what happened with Toronto, I honestly think we can't have this discussion without also talking about what's going on with Texas. Because Texas is in a nosedive right now. And uh, what, what are your thoughts on this, about the fact that the, the, this is just, uh, as Bryce Patrick said, the, the, the bullpen has basically turned into performance art at this point. Absolutely incredible. When uh, Texas has won, I want to say it's now four of their last 18 games. It might even be four of their last 19 games. It has been an incredible free fall, Sully. And right as this free fall began, they were a game and a half behind Baltimore for the one seed for crying out loud. So yeah. Never mind hanging on for your dear life, trying to get that third and final playoff spot. They were looking good for the one seed and just behind Hotlanta for number one in all of baseball. This was mere weeks ago, Sully. This is yeah. mere weeks ago. And now we've got the locked on Rangers. Our, our, one of our fellow broadcast our, our podcast saying, you know what? It's already over. That was their episode today. This thing's over. We're dead in the water. It, it, yeah. It's been a remarkable. You talk about, you know, back in the day, uh, 1987, Toronto Blue Jays, last seven games of the season needed to win one game to win. The against the Yankees. Against the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. But th th that was oh, no, 80, no, no, 87. 85. That's right. 87. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, the Yankees, yeah. And I actually remember this was before you could check the game on the phone. I was at Candlestick Park, the final game of the season. Uh, the Giants had already clinched the West, and they were basically playing up the string. Bob Brenly hit a walk-off homer that day. Nice. But they were giving updates on the final game of the season, which was a one nothing showdown, again, from memory. Yeah. Uh, Frank Tanana of Detroit, and I believe it was Jimmy Key of Toronto. They both threw a complete game. And uh, and if I'm not mistaken, was it uh, Chet Lemon who hit a home run to make it one nothing? Oh, I can't even believe you're saying that. I mean, you are in my head. I always make the mistake of saying Chet Lemon and have to correct myself. It was Larry Herndon. It was Larry. I, I, oh, I always oh, start with Chet Lemon. And, and I should know that because Larry Herndon was a guest on my old podcast. So you oh. would think I would have remembered that. But uh, an interesting thing. Down the stretch, George Bell won the MVP of the American League. But down the stretch, Tony, the aforementioned Tony Fernandez was injured. And his injury was right around the time they went into a tailspin, which goes to show you the value he had on that team. But that being said, right right now, we're, we're before we go too deep into our childhood, <laughs> well, right now, Houston is blowing the doors off the dump 7-1. Uh, to one over the Texas Rangers. So it looks, it looks even though Toronto lost to Oakland, we're going to get that a little bit in segment two, it's looking more and more like we're going to wake up tomorrow and the Blue Jays are going to be alone in the wild card race as we're tiptoeing and tiptoeing closer to 
uh, the middle of September. And while obviously it's only a half game difference, I think Bryce has a point in saying, hey, wait a minute. Uh, the way the way the trajectory is going, uh, this is really a, a spiral, and it's unbelievable when you consider they acquired Scherzer and Jordan wow. Montgomery. They look like this is why you can't do the whole who won the trade deadline minutes after the trade deadline. Absolutely, yes. If I'm the Texas Rangers, I, I think they're only getting out of jail free card right now is one week from today. So today's Thursday. So next Thursday will be the fourth and final game of Texas and Toronto. Next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Texas is in town. If I'm the Rangers, that's their only get out of jail free card. They have mm-hmm. to try to hang on uh, coming up this weekend. Try to be at at most a game and a half back and come into Toronto and take three out of four or try to win that series. Uh, the, the Blue Jays are setting themselves up in a scenario where they can actually split the that series now there's and there'll be you know two and a half one and a half two and a half up on texas with 15 left to play so the blue jays are certainly in the driver's seat here when it comes to these two teams uh, i'm hoping seattle's going to continue to come back to but i'm still hopeful that there's going to be another team in in there solely but the, the the really odd thing about all of this is it's such a fine needle thread here because really the place you want to be is that third wild card spot? Be careful what you wish for, right? But that third right. wild card spot is going to beat Minnesota in the first round of the playoffs. I'm certain of that. So it's the it's where you want to be. The Toronto Blue Jays don't want to be going to Tampa Bay. The the reason for the bald head, Sully, is is how the Blue Jays <laughs> play over the years at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Oh, we we did the AL East preview together at the beginning of the year. I mentioned this. Right, yeah. yeah. Tampa always always has the Toronto Blue Jays number. It's never mattered. The standings, who's hurt, who's none of it's ever mattered. Tampa over Toronto for the last 25 years. So I would love to avoid that matchup. So it's a really, really ironic thing here, Sully. Blue Jays trying to thread that needle, be that three seed, so they can play Minnesota in the first round. I just want everyone to know that uh, before the Blue Jays played the Rays, Craig had a beautiful Barry Gibb yes. head of hair. <laughs> and then that series came about, and we have Lex Luthor. It was um, enviable, yeah. But by the way, I want to just uh, quickly, this is one of my uh, YouTube followers, uh, Mindset Master commented uh the rangers are the epitome of a runner in a marathon and the initial 150 uh, the at a, at a marathon of 162 miles uh and the 100 the first 150 miles you sprinted um yeah i i get what you saw there then the math may not be 100 percent on there but we all know what we all know what he means we see that all the time we see teams that it's like like the Rangers are probably going to finish the season in the mid to high 80s or maybe the low 90 wins. And if I turn the world, not to go Superman again, but if I turn the world back and turn back time and got to the beginning of the season and I came up to Ranger fans and said, like, hey, you're going to mm-hmm. lose, you're going to lose Jacob deGrom for almost the entire season, but you're going to be content. You're going to be a half game out of a wild card spot and probably win 88 to 90 wins. Every Ranger fan would have taken that. Well, not only that, Sully, but you use the race analogy. This Texas Ranger team stopped at the at the at the station to, and, and got replenished at the trade deadline, just like you said. So to continue to stumble like they have, my goodness, absolutely incredible. I was never, I don't know if the, you know, not tuning my own horn because at some point Talk I guess I it. did. I, I well, at some point I guess I did sort of start to believe in Texas, I guess. But I, not that I saw this fall coming, Sully. Who could have? But I, I, I was never hugely high on the Texas Rangers. I'm wary of teams that are cutting a bunch of checks to make their team. When that team faces adversity in many sports, time and time again, we see that team crumble. We're seeing it right before our very eyes now. Uh, losing Josh Young hurt. Boy, I don't know. I, I think that Texas, when it's all said and done, my if we have to have an actual. You know, absolute prediction here, Sully, when it's all said and done. I do think the scenario you just mentioned is going to play out. Texas at 89, 90 wins, somewhere around there. A a season that on the surface they should be proud of, but ultimately they're going to be on the outside looking in. Well, do you know what it's like? It's like a motor where not every part fits, which reminds me. Which reminds me of your motor where not every part fits. Is that going to bring us to eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, 
You can make sure every part fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check mark so you know the part will fit or your money back. Just because, like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Sorry, Toronto fans. I know, eligible I know. items, <laughs> Eligible items only. Exclusions. They apply. I feel badly doing that eBay Motor Live read. You know, like half the people listening are not going to be taking advantage of it. <laughs> So, so how do you think I feel reading these things? Sully, we've got Nutrafol as a new sponsor. Nutrafol is all about hair growth. I mean. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, look at, if you want to go eBay motor, just drive, drive across, you go to Niagara you Falls, you head on over, get your parts over in Buffalo and head on back. All right. Um, let's talk about the Blue Jays because, uh, you know, today they lost to Oakland. Um, yesterday, actually, Walter Chuck pitched very well. Yeah. against the Blue Jays. It was it was nothing, nothing going into the seventh. And for reasons that scholars, scientists, and poets will never be able to understand, they removed Waldachuk from the game. Like, what are the A's playing for? What are they saving yeah. their arms at this point? And they brought in a, a they brought in a couple of relievers, including one that was Sammy Long, I think. Well, Zach um, Neal, I think, so, walked the bases loaded. And then they and, brought in Long, yeah. Yeah, and it was a disaster. I mean, like, well, you, it was nothing, nothing, and then it was seven, nothing. Yeah. Um, and so they got that win today. Uh, not, not, not so much. Uh, give the A's credit. Um, they, you know, they had every right to just sort of fold the tent and everything. And they, they rallied and, uh, they won five to two today, which I'm sure doesn't sit well with Toronto Blue Jays fans. Um, but that being said, the Blue Jays have won when they needed to win. They did win the series in Oakland. Yeah. Um, and as bad as Oakland is, you know, go to a, someone else's stadium and win the series. That's how you, you know, stay in the stay in the wild card chase. Uh, today's loss notwithstanding, um, what do you think has been the 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 difference over the last couple of weeks? The turnaround with this team, the Buffalo Boys. They brought up uh, Davis Schneider from AAA. They brought up Spencer Horowitz from AAA. Ernie Clement. Ernie er, Ernie Clement. The, the Toronto Blue Jays all season long have been, and now lately it's been better, but all season long the issue has been they've just been atrocious with hitting with runners in scoring position. Erdy Clement comes up from from uh, from Buffalo. He had another one today. He's 9 for 11 with runners in scoring position, Sully, since he came up a couple weeks ago. Is that good? 9 for 11, this kid. Davis Schneider's getting all kinds of huge hits. It's been the injection of the youth coming up. This Toronto Blue Jays team, I've never seen, and everydayers on the Lockdown Blue Jay podcast know how many times have I mentioned this, I've never seen a worse good team than the 2023 <laughs> Toronto Blue Jays. The, the way they execute is just yeah. absolutely pitiful. Their approach at the plate is as bad as you are going to see. The team approach is as bad as you are going to see. Now here come these guys from AAA who haven't been – this is going too far, but for lack of a better term, who haven't been poisoned by what they're no. doing to these hitters on the big league level. They've got Matt Heggs. They've got the AAA batting coach's philosophy, and they are coming up and putting together really good at-bats. I've never seen a team more than the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays not be ready to hit a pitcher's mistake. These guys from Buffalo have come up, and they are hitting pitcher's mistakes. You lose Matt Chapman and you lose Bo Bichette and you gain ground in the in the wild card standings. I mean, something's up there. It's these it's these kids from AAA. They've absolutely been performing. The pitching's been good all all, all year long. Uh, the the addition of Jordan Hicks has been fantastic. Chad mm -hmm. Green now, former New York Yankee, is in the mix as well. Going to get Eric Swanson back at some point soon. That was the big uh, trade, you know, in the offseason. Him for tail. Uh, so right. the bullpen, I'm really liking. The starting pitching overall has been really good. The, the Wednesday loss, Sully, I almost have to chalk it up to just sort of like you you, you can't win them all type things. Like e even the big blow was a three-run home run. Kevin Smith, he golfed that pitch pitchers out of shoe tops. I mean, Trevor Richards was – I think Trevor Richards is still on the mound in Oakland looking around. He was stunned yeah. at that, at what happened there. So that was just sort of one of those things. I mean, you score two runs. I guess we can point to that, yes. But, Sully, that's been the difference. Man, this city is – buzzing right now about we're calling them the buffalo boys these these kids that have come up from triple a and there's still a relvis martinez and addison barger down there but the guys who have come up 
Bowden Francis has really really did a nice job to solidify the bullpen as well. These kids, I mean, youth is being served in Canada, Sully. Um, I did that episode on May 21st. I looked it up on May 21st where I said, you know, fire Schneider immediately. And part of the and, – and I will confess, Craig, I had not followed the Blue Jays that closely since then. And one of the reasons why I was adamant about it was, first of all, I felt that Schneider was – someone who was had taken over from Montoyo. He had the the aura of your interim manager. Uh, and I thought he was going to get fired after the collapse of the playoffs. I'm like, okay, our interim manager was there. Fine. Let's, let's take a stab to get someone with experience in here. The first couple of months, you're right. I saw them play. They looked like they were just clueless. They looked like they are, their approach was terrible. Yeah. They were making mental mistakes. They didn't look prepared. That was one of the reasons why I said, fire him now, because if this guy's, you know, if the bus driver is, is swerving all over the place, he doesn't mm-hmm. have to, you know, there, there, was, there was too much talent on this team to not be, you know, to, to be a fringe contender. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you just said was kind of goes a little bit of what we learned about Cincinnati this year and what we're seeing with the New York Yankees this year and what we're seeing with the Toronto Blue Jays. Bring up your best players. Have how many is in the roster? Twenty six right now. Yeah, well, twenty eight. We're up to twenty eight okay. now. Yeah. Okay, but like for the for the regular season, yeah. Your twenty if your twenty six best healthy players should be your major league roster. Not playing, you know, fiddle faddle to uh to you know manipulate service time not saying oh but we got we owe it to this veteran for this and that your 26 most talented players should be on that roster that was the exact moment that the turnaround happened with the Cincinnati Reds they were going mm-hmm. absolutely nowhere now they're in a position to that they're contending for a wild card team the Yankees were what six seven games under 500 with the with the cardiac you know the cardiac arrest crew they started cleaning house. They brought up all their young kids. They're now above 500. Do I think they're going to be in a wild card spot? Not really, but there was they were guaranteed to have a losing season this year. They were even on pace to lose 90 games. Now they may very well have a winning season because, and say it with me, they're playing their best players. And you just mentioned the Buffalo boys. Well, what do they do? They said, well, we're not doing well, so let's bring up our best players. And I know it seems basic, but there is a real, real chance that Toronto could get that third wildcard spot, face Minnesota. I have two boys who are in college right now, and the Minnesota Twins have been in the postseason many of the years that they've been alive. The Minnesota Twins have not won a postseason game in my boys' lifetime, and they can vote. (laughs) <laughs> not win a series, win a game. Yeah. Um, and they're an okay team, but definitely beatable. Um, and, you know, the runner-up in the AL West is probably going to play Tampa Bay, and that's going to be a barn burner. Yes. There is a real possibility that you could wake up and see Toronto playing Baltimore in the, the division series. Now, I give the edge to Baltimore, Yeah, but – That's still not an impossible series. And when we get back from this break, I'm going to tell you exactly why I think it's not an impossible series. We're with Craig Ballard of Locked On Blue Jays. Um, I'm sorry I'm filibustering here for a little bit, but I I do want to get this point in. Chris Bassett, Jose Barrios, Gosman. The Blue Jays have some of the best starting pitching in the American League. I like Toronto's starting pitching better than Minnesota's. I like it better than Baltimore's. Me too. Baltimore isn't bad, but it's not great. The top of Toronto's rotation is better than the top of Baltimore's rotation. I I have no compunction saying that whatsoever. I think Houston has a huge advantage with having Verlander back and Val, you know, Framber Valdez is a wonderful pitcher. I think they're still a solid team. Seattle's still a solid. I mean, I'm not saying the Jays have a, a a a free pass all the way to the World Series, 
you play get past Minnesota and face Baltimore, and you got whatever combination, Barrios, Gosman, Bassett, I give the Blue Jays a puncher's chance at a best of five series. Maybe not a best of seven, but best of five where it's a more conducive, excuse me, as I nearly hiccuped in the middle of a show, it's more conducive for upsets. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think the Blue Jays are, are one team that other teams won't want to see in the playoffs because of what you just said. All these other teams, they're going to be in the playoffs because they've got good teams. I mean, yes, very obviously, yes. But when you talk about they're all going to have – a, a spot in 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 the series, game three, game four, or game five, where they've got their fingers crossed. Okay, things need to break right for us here. Mm-hmm. You just said, regardless of how Toronto runs them out there, and we can throw you say Kikuchi in that mix. We might even be able to throw Hyunjin Ryu in if it, in, if you're talking about a seven game series. It's not going to matter for the Toronto Blue Jays. Last season in game one of the two game series was well ended up being two games because Seattle swept them. They went with Alec Manoa game one, and they did that because if you lose game one, you've got the veteran Kevin Gosman to write the ship in game two. There's nothing like that for the Blue Jays this season. Whoever they need to write the ship is going to be a veteran coming in that you can count on. So from a pitching matchup standpoint, absolutely nobody's going to want to run in to the Toronto Blue Jays in the playoffs. Offensively, they're inferior to every team that will be in the playoffs. But you, what's the old adage, Sully? The old adage is very definitely about pitching, and it's about defense. So, yes, I very much think that there's at least a puncher's chance for the Blue Jays. Now, they're going to have to figure some things out. Let's have an open, honest conversation here. If it's Baltimore, Jays are going to have to figure things out. Baltimore has slapped around the Blue Jays this season. So mm-hmm. they're going to need to figure some things out, yes. But absolutely, the it's not going to matter – how the Blue Jays orchestrate their their pitching rotation in the in the five game series or the seven game series, they're going to be feeling very good. Going every single day, Sully, of these playoffs that the Blue Jays are in that cab or in that Uber in this day and age, going to the ballpark, they're going to feel confident that they can win that game. And one of the things about the wild card series, it's designed to take out the team's ace to basically say, "Hey, look at you got to win your division. You got to be you know it gives an advantage to the top two teams." Mm by making sure the other team has to play their ace in that wild card series. Yeah. But let's say you go in best of three series and you say Bassett, Barrios, Gosman. Okay. Then you could still, let's say it goes all the, the full distance. You still have Kikuchi would yeah. pitch game one and chances are Bassett or Barrios would go against their number three. You know what I mean? So you have, you're putting yourself in a situation where, you're at least setting the team up to be in a good position to push it to a game five of which a game five oh, by definition is a coin toss. So um, they're in that, or as it says on that first round, you've got Kikuchi as the extra pitcher. Yeah. He starts game one. This is what I'm talking about. The Jays are yeah. 17 and 10 when Kikuchi started the season. They win when he starts. It's not going to matter to them. The, the Blue Jays won't be going to the ballpark that day thinking, come on, it's our number four, or our number five. Come on. They're, they're regardless who it is, they're going to know we've got a chance today. We've got a chance today in the playoffs. I think that's absolutely huge. And having Genesis Cabrera, having Jordan Hicks join Romano and give them a little, a little extra wiggle room in their bullpen. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think pitching wise, and this is why they're dangerous uh, pitching wise. If Toronto makes it in again, I, I, I think the pennant is going to be either Houston or Baltimore at this point. I mean, the, the, you know, being, being hundred percent honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think those are the, two, I think those, I think, I think Baltimore and Houston are going to wind up meeting in the American League championship series, but the kind of team that will upset them is Toronto because you mentioned, you mentioned the puncher's chance. Yeah. All due respect to Minnesota. If Minnesota wins that first series, I don't give them the puncher's chance in that next series. Oh, they got they get clobbered by so. by Baltimore. That I would be a, so. that would be a clean sweep. If they if 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 Minnesota, let's say it's Minnesota, let's say we do a 1991 ALCS rematch, and it's Minnesota versus the Jays, uh, and, and let's say Minnesota tops the Jays, and Minnesota goes on to play Baltimore. I that's I'm sorry, they'll win it in two. They'll win it in two because yeah, they won't play the yeah. they won't play the third game just because their feelings would be hurt. Um, but you know, I I look at this. I do like I of all of the American League pitching staffs, the one that I'd be the most afraid of in a best of five series is Toronto, which is why it's a they're an intriguing team and they got to hang on. They got to hang on big time. 
When you look and, at the uh, pitchers as well, Sully, it's all veteran. I talk about Manoa starting game one last season. Yeah. He has Julio Rodriguez 0 and 2 to start the game and hits him. And the next batter hits and then walks the next batter, then a three run home run. So that was a moment that was too big for the rookie pitcher. What rookie pitcher are the Blue Jays running out there right now? This is all veterans, Sully. Everyone we've mentioned right now is a veteran. The, 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 the playoffs aren't going to be too big of a stage for anybody that the Blue Jays run out there. But no one was like their Cy Young candidate last year, and oh. he's not even a factor. And I mean, we're not even talking about him getting a start. Um, all right, before we wrap up here, let's just take a quick peek. I mean, they, they lost to Oakland today. They're going to face Kansas City. Uh, and then comes the big four games against Texas, yes. which could really define who they are. And the rest of the season, look at Boston, who's you know slumping lately, obviously, and the Yankees are on fire lately. But Boston's talented. Yankees talented. Then you got Tampa. Then you finish the season with nothing but the Yankees and the Rays. Yeah. So it, it's not. You know, the Yankees aren't playing, are probably going to, you know, not make the postseason, obviously. Although, who knows? Jesus, if they go on the huge run. <laughs> oh, God, what a nightmare that would be no, for us. No, please, Yankee no, haters. yeah, please, no, please, no. My God. But they, you know, this is going to be a gauntlet for them to run. And maybe that will also be the sort of thing that um, helps the team in a postseason situation where they're already playing, you know, high leverage games. Like they won't have that sort of lull going in. Although I think that 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 narrative is always written in retrospect. There's always been situations like, oh, they were they were exhausted from a pennant race and then they got swept, or oh, they had that pennant race that kept them energized. So I think it's I think it's always something in retrospect. But um, well, I can look see at what you're I, saying there, Sully. But especially when you consider when we talk about the Buffalo Boys, this might be important to get them playing some big games prior to postseason baseball. So I actually think you're onto something there. All right. Well, look at that. Well, even a <laughs> even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Uh, hey, uh, Craig, uh, we're, tell me where they could listen to your show. Locked on Blue Jays. Uh, every day, uh, lock, uh, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, right, Sully? So you know that's your team every day. Uh, the YouTube uh, Locked On Blue Jay YouTube page. Uh, please uh, drop by, hit that like, drop that comment. Would love to hear from you. Hit that subscribe, please, and thank you. And wherever you you take in your your uh, your podcast. I absolutely love looking at the analytics, and I see that there's downloads from Hong Kong, Singapore, Philippines. Like it's just it, it, it's. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of fan bases are worldwide like that. But yeah. Toronto Blue Jays to see them be worldwide like that is 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 really cool. It's it's been that th that that's probably been my favorite part actually, Sully, of, of doing the Lockdown Blue Jay podcast is seeing how worldwide the Blue Jay fan base is. It, it, it's a very very passionate fan. You think it's all Canada, right? Like I, I and even me, even me, I've always thought Canada, Canada, Canada. Well. There's U.S. fans and there's fans across the world. So a shout out to the Toronto Blue Jay fan base. And by the way, shout out to you for that phenomenal backdrop you have here. I'm going to build <laughs> up my. You, I'm building up my backdrop, but yours is already great. Hey, let's do a trivia question. Uh, the Blue Jays won a pair of pennants. Uh, the ALCS MVP in '92 was Robbie Alomar. The ALCS MVP in '93 was the great Dave Smunk Stewart. Uh, Twenty-eight teams have had a league championship series MVP. Only two franchises oh, wow. have never had a league championship series MVP. Who are that? And if you have the answer, write it down here on the YouTube comments or send it to me at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram, or Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram. Who are the two franchises to have never have had a league championship series MVP. So follow us at the places there and please, please feel uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and check out Craig's great podcast on Locked on Jays. Talking Thanks, about the wild, wild card and the <laughs> north of the border team that could catch some of the contenders by surprise. This has been a Locked on MLB, Locked on Blue Jays crossover. He's Craig Ballard. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. <laughs>